Went on the air, we said, if you ask for a guest, we'll do our very best to get that guest. You asked for Vince McMahon, we got Vince McMahon. You asked for Stone Cold Steve Austin, we got him. You asked for Bret Hart once upon a time, and we got him many times. Today, maybe our most requested guest ever. Today! No, it's not you, Jeff Merrick. It's not uh, you, Carl DeMarco. It is Sable on Off the Record. Great to see you, the WWF Women's Champion. Thank you for having me. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Well, our fans have been looking forward to this because uh, what we do is we present uh, you in a different light. You get an opportunity to talk about all kinds of issues, and uh, we're just glad to have you here today. Thank you. Great to welcome the president of Titan Sports Canada, the president of WWF Canada, Carl DeMarco. I've forgotten this for a time. This is your, what, your third appearance on Off the Record. Yeah, I'm losing track so many. I thought the most amount of requests was for me, but you no. mentioned Sable's name. <laughs> Truth of the matter is, you keep screwing it up, but when you bring us good guests, <laughs> it's okay. I make up for it. And uh, great to welcome, for the first time, the co-host of the Law Live Audio Wrestling, Jeff Merrick on Off the Record. Michael, thanks for having me. I'm marking out. It's Sable. What's the camera on me for? Sable! The truth of the matter there is that, uh, that we actually had a draw, and you were the guest winner, but we had to give you some kind of title to uh, appear oh, on the thanks, show. Uh, okay, we, we, we want to talk about a lot of aspects of the WWF, but first of all, let's talk about women's wrestling in the World Wrestling Federation. It seems as though the role of the woman is changing right now in the WWF. Absolutely. I think this is the first time in a long time that we've seen the WWF really get behind the women's division as a legitimate wrestling division. Um, before you had Lundra Blaze, and she would do matches every now and then. It was pretty hit and miss before that with the Moolahs and the Wendy Richters. Again, that was pretty hit and miss. I think this is the first time the WWF has been serious and said, you know what, we're going to put a stable of women together, and we're going to do legitimate matches. Uh, we do some gimmick matches, just like the guys do, of course, obviously. But this is the first time they've really gotten behind it and said, you know what, we're even going to make a belt. The belt looks top drawer, and the wrestling is even top drawer as well. It's really changed, though, for you, Sable, right? When you joined the WWF, what, three years ago? Yes. Your role was very different than it is right now. Yes, I think uh, the division has definitely taken off. I think at the time that I joined, all the females that were involved in the sport were involved in a managerial aspect or some type of submissive role, and I think that now we are being uh, viewed as a much stronger uh, drawing draw for the WWF. You know, way back when, it used to be, you know, Fabulous Mula who wasn't obviously like Sable. Uh, now we've changed that. We've put, you know, Sable in there, which definitely is one of the most popular WWE female superstars we have, Deborah Michaels, et cetera. And we're really trying to attract uh, not only the male demographic viewer, but believe it or not, we're really trying to attract the female viewer because a lot of times when our fans watch the WWE shows, they always place themselves as part of that character. And as you see in the WWF, sometimes the females can be overbearing and don't get pushed around by the men too much. And they push around the men. And we want to have the females feel that they have that opportunity being placed into the show also. I think what a lot of the fans um, appreciate too is this is really the WWF being honest and saying, you know what, athletics is a much, as much about being sexy as it is about being athletic. And I think two intertwined, and I, I really applaud the WWF for being honest about it and not trying to pretend that, you know, that sex is somehow over here and not a part of wrestling, which really is a big umbrella now. Wrestling is a lot of different things and sex is one of them. Well, I think three quarters, typically three quarters of the viewing audience is definitely male, but I think we're drawing a larger percentage of women to watch our show now because they are, we are presenting women in a much stronger and uh, dominant role and um, they're not as submissive as they were and uh, I think that we're giving women something to be proud of and to look up to. Well just look at Pretty Mean Sisters, I mean that's a pretty progressive, that could never have been done five or ten years ago, Pretty Mean Sisters. Wrestling fans would have freaked out, that never would have worked. Pretty Mean Sisters works really well today and that's what WWF is doing well. They have their thumb on the pulse, on the climate uh, of the sort of, of the wrestling vibe. They know exactly what wrestling fans want and what is cool and what is edgy and I think PMS is walking that line pretty much to a T. Okay, let's, let's take a look at some action, uh, WWF, uh, some of the action that, that you were uh, just uh, alluding to. And uh, wh what are we seeing here? This is, this is you, Sable, with... Yes, this was uh, a match Luna? that I had two weeks ago. At the time, I did not realize that it was Luna, um, which totally caught me off guard because uh, I thought we had become allies. No, um, but uh, aside from the storyline, when you, when you started out, right, you, you were a model. Yes. Um, but you were also an athlete. Uh, yes. I know that you played, uh, should I say it? You were a great softball player. Why are we hesitating sure. to say that? You should be proud of that. I, you did I, motocross and kickboxing and all that stuff. But were you ready to be down with your throat on the ropes there, uh, being thrown around the ring? Because when you joined the WWF, it didn't involve getting the crap beat out of you. 
No, it didn't, and I never anticipated uh, becoming a wrestler, but um, I think that being as athletic as I've always been, I think it was just a natural transition for me. Um, I'm very capable of defending myself, and I think it gave me an opportunity to showcase my uh, kickboxing What was your first experience with it, though? Um, what, think back uh, to the first time that you moved into the different role, which was away from being a manager, away from being uh, a talking head, and, and really just a symbol to um, actually getting involved in the physicality. Uh, my first match was actually against Luna, and uh, she's a veteran of the sport. She's been in the business for 13 or more years. She's grown up in it. So she is a tremendous athlete, and it was uh, extremely nerv nervous for me to go into that arena that she was so familiar with that I was totally unfamiliar with, and to have to perform on her level. And uh, it, was, it was very difficult for that? me. Um, in that In that match? In that particular match, I, I think I won. <laughs> no, I did. I won. And um, it was uh, a wonderful accomplishment for me because, you know, here I am, not the aggressor. She was the aggressor, and I just basically defended myself against her. And uh, she was being the bully, and sometimes they don't always come out on top. So it was, it was good for me. What was it like taking your first bumps? I know a lot of wrestlers talk about, you know what, I wanted to get into wrestling, and then I went, and then I took my first bumps in the ring, and man, I have a whole new respect for it, and oh, I can't do this, this is too much. I mean, you went from modeling to getting body slammed. Well, um, as soon as I take my first bump, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of my contract, I but don't you, bump. You know what happens <laughs> is when they get a taste of being in the ring, all of a sudden they want to go right to the top. And I think, no doubt, that happened for, for Sable. Because once you're in there, it doesn't matter if in the female division or the male division, once you're in there, you want to become number one. You want to get the gold, because that means you're the best at it. All right, on that note, we'll take a break, but you know that we've got to talk about, uh, you've got a spread coming up in Playboy? A spread? How about a, well, uh, that, well, a that, layout? That, well, that, that, I'm, just, I'm just talking photo terminology yeah. here. I didn't mean I anything did by it. I shoot for Playboy, yes. Can we call things like that? Right? Help me out here, guys. Help oh, me out. No, man. Um, I'm not um, but also, when we return, here. we'll talk about no Vince way. McMahon, who used to say that there were no good guys or bad guys anymore, but is he not the ultimate bad guy now in WWF wrestling? When off the record return. To the show with Sable, Carl DeMarco, Jeff Merrick, as we talk about Sable, you have uh, an appearance uh, that's coming up in Playboy Thank magazine. Uh, what month is that? Yes, I think it's going to be the April edition. We're not clear on that yet, but um, I'm really looking forward to it coming out. I shot it uh, in December, and I think it's going to be tremendous publicity. Have you seen for... the pictures yet? Yes, I did. I, I think it was beautiful. Why'd you do it, though? A lot of women would turn that down because, I mean, you're, uh, you want to be taken seriously, obviously, in what you do. Why did you uh, take your clothes off for Playboy? Well, I, first I'd like to say that um, posing for Playboy doesn't mean that I still do not want to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that there's anything wrong with uh, a nude body. I think it's how it's presented. And uh, secondly, I would like to say that um, I, I dealt with some issues for a long time. They've been negotiating with me to do this for about two years now and in the beginning it was definitely not anything I was interested in doing. Um, I thought about it for a few years and they continued to come back to me and I just threw a number at them and I said if, if they're really interested in me then they'll meet my agreement and they did. So, so your, uh, your rival Sonny, uh, former rival, she's no longer with the WWF. Um seems to be really upset for some reason that you uh, are making your appearance in Playboy. Um, she says, and I'm quoting somebody, she said, I, uh, the Playboy came to me three years ago. I had a meeting in Vince's office. I turned him down in five minutes and believe they offered me a lot of money. And believe me, they offered me a lot of money. Sorry, but I have morals and I don't even claim to be a good Christian. How do you respond well, to your, your, your good old friend, First of all, I never, I, Sonny has never been my friend nor my rival. Um, I, I, I get this everywhere I go. She just... Uh, Honestly, I feel sorry for Sunny. Um, I hope she does well in life, and I wish her all the best. But um, I would like to say that Playboy never negotiated with her, that uh, she started a big um, campaign, Sunny for Playboy, which never took off. And she was very upset about that. I am a Christian. Um, this has nothing to do with my faith. It was a decision that I made very consciously, and I, I'm very proud of my body, proud of myself, and my decision to do it. And I think it's going to be a wonderful opportunity for me. It's uh, not only a wonderful financial gain, I've, I was offered one of the most lucrative contracts ever offered by Playboy. Have you disclosed how much it was? No. And, and I will not do so. I mean, that's, that's private business for myself, and uh, I'm extremely happy with it. And um, as far as um, 
anyone agreeing or disagreeing with me about my choice to do it. The only people that I'm really concerned with would be my family, and we are all in agreement on it, so. You know, the exciting thing is, I hear that Fitz McMahon's gonna let the corporate team try to look at some of the pictures and help her pick it. That's what I'm <laughs> really excited about. I would like to say I have total creative control. <laughs> oh, but the corporate and, uh, team's gotta have some no sort of say. No one will see any pictures before <laughs> I see them. Corporate, they had Shawn Michaels in Playgirl, right? And he can't have the monopoly on, uh, on exposing himself. I, Why I not? Say it's part of the attitude, right? I think it's a opportunity right? and sure. great exposure, not only for myself, but for the World Wrestling Interesting Federation. Interesting choice of words, but yeah, okay. Play, Playboy, uh, by the way, exposure? is first class, and they always do things first okay. class. Let's talk about Vince McMahon. Uh, here he, I, I think the, the true brilliance of Vince McMahon, and this is not sucking up to Vince McMahon, but, but he was in a very difficult position after the Survivor Series with Bret Hart. Um, because the fans, in a lot of ways, didn't like Vince McMahon, because especially in this country, Bret Hart was such a big hero. And then he puts the spin on that, makes himself part of the storyline, and now is the ultimate but top bad guy, I think, in all of wrestling. I think there's a really interesting analogy you can draw between Vince McMahon and Stone Cold Steve Austin if you sort of read them in a specific kind of way. Uh, and this is really another layer of, of Vince's brilliance, really. The way that Stone Cold behaves in the ring is really the way Vince McMahon is. He's ballsy, doesn't really take crap from anyone, he does what he wants, when he wants, he takes charge, and he sort of has positioned himself as the underdog kind of guy, and people really dig him. And that's part of the Vince point. He said, this is who I am, and I'm going to start being honest about it. That's part of what WWF has done so well in the last five years. Well, Vince McMahon on TV is playing, you know, uh, a character, and what's happened is that, you know, obviously after the Bret Hart situation, everybody was unfairly deeming him as his bad guy. Uh, very smartly, and that's why they call him a genius. He decided to roll with that, and let's you know turn that as a storyline. Which, really, uh, Vince McMahon has to be given credit uh, turning the WWF around on that storyline, and he's done a phenomenal job. We're entertainment, and that's what he's delivering. I think one of the most remarkable things too is you guys did it without, well, obviously without Brett, and then without Sean, and then to an extent by the end of the year without Stone Cold. And if you'd have said a year ago. The, that WWF was going to be on top of the Monday Night Wars, on top of the pay-per-views, without Brett, without Sean, and without Steve Austin. They would have laughed in your face and said, not a chance, not a prayer. But you know what? Vince McMahon knew. Vince McMahon knew way before anybody else. You see, when the average person is thinking like this, Vince McMahon is thinking like this. He is so ahead of his time, it's unbelievable. And that's why he's changing our business. You know. Uh, other organizations are going to be in the wrestling business. We're not. We're not in the wrestling business anymore. We are in the sports entertainment business. I remember business. When, when Vince was on the show and we were walking in the studio and I, and I talked about athletes and I talked about sport. I said, you're sport. He said, we don't call it sport anymore. And that's a huge change. We are the, our WWE superstars are the greatest athletes in the world. It's a combination of both. But take, for example, Raw. Raw is the greatest TV action series you can see. That's exactly what it is. It's, it's, it's entertainment for all our viewers out there, and that's what we're delivering. Well, there's no question that, uh, that the WWF pushes the limits, and when we return, we'll talk about what is too far and how far do you think the WWF should go in the future. I got the belt now. I'm not letting go of it unless you try to take it away from me. Oh, I can take it. Yeah, well, let's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would be a disgrace to my, my uh, sex at this point if I didn't say, bring it on. And I think I that would be a disgrace now. to mine if I didn't take that challenge. Okay, well, perhaps uh, next block we got to <laughs> keep... But don't forget, we own it. Wh who's we? Where does this come from? WWF. That's... The person who has the belt owns the belt. Look the what, WWF. Look what logo's on it, Mike, right in front of it. World Wrestling Federation. There it. it is. The greatest... I would be the woman. You got <laughs> it. Would be the WWF. What's too far, though, for the World Wrestling Federation? I mean, uh, it's... What we see in the WWF, I think, on a weekly basis, pushes the limit. And I know the philosophy is to push the limit and see what the viewers will say. Take a look at this. This is uh, um, some, I, I think, classic WWF stuff in the sense of uh, what's going on here. This is mankind who's just put his body through unbelievable abuse. I mean, it's staggering when you see. I mean, y yeah, is, is the decision made ahead of time who's going to win? Of course. But is this real? knocking around of bodies you bet it is what's too far well is it real this is entertainment michael well it's, it's you know for years no but you sell it to us all the no, time no, carl you see these guys get hurt they do but right you know so what, it's though? real you, you know what though it's entertainment it's storylines and for years the wrestling industry has been trying to protect yes it is real it's, it is real and the fans are saying it's fake it's fake it's fake now that we've come out and saying okay it's entertainment everybody say no it isn't it's real 
Yes, our superstars go all full to the limits to perform for the fans, and the word is performs. It is entertainment. We should not be held any different from any other TV series, if it's Melrose Place, soap operas, any other action series, etc., or any other movie. And that's why we're going to be taking all the Hollywood effects and putting into our shows. We're entertainment. That's what we're here for. I stopped caring whether wrestling was real or fake when I was about 11 or 12 years old. And I think wrestling fans are the same. And I think it's kind of insulting to say, well, you know, you're, you're, you're selling something that's fake here. You're trying to pass it off as real. That's, that's uh, an issue that we dealt with 10 years ago. That's come and gone. It's old. Um, as far as uh, what's too far for WWF, there's different WWF products you have to consider. Monday Night Raw is an adult show, right? Yep. Uh, Sunday Night Heat is geared for, towards a younger audience, and they have also have other uh, television shows that are geared towards younger audiences, just like cartoons. There are cartoons for adults, there are cartoons for children. There's wrestling for adults, there's wrestling for children. And this is, I think, where a lot of people kind of get funky and they say, well, this is wrestling, so it's supposed to be for kids. Well, you know what? It's not. It's mainly for adults now. And I think that's where uh, responsible parroting comes in, and you have to make that decision for your family, whether it's right, right for them to watch or not. And a lot of parents don't agree with it, and they don't have to let their children watch it. Oh, I'd like to say something. Uh, Raw is for the young adults. Our weekend shows is geared towards youth, and it's a lot more tame. But, uh, you know, I, I, every person at home watching our WWE show, you know, everybody says, well, how far can you go? It's up to the individual viewers make that decision and there's education you know take for example you know you see dx with with the x shot and and saying the word suck it but you know what though that's in front of the tv that's entertainment but when they go to flying on the airplane uh, you know going to counter air canada they don't tell the people to say that when they go to a restaurant they don't do that to people there you know and that's why if anybody is imitating them they're wrong you know, and that's where I think parents need to say, look, this is, this is a TV show. Just like if somebody's watching uh, Superman on TV and all of a sudden the kid's climbing on top of the house and ready to dive off the, the house thinking he can fly, hey, I got to say, the parents got to talk to the kids. Right. This is entertainment. Sable, uh, there was a match uh, between Road Dog and Al Snow, right? And, and the pro <laughs> Oh, this was a clap. I'm sorry, man. I mark out for this match every time. Look at this. The pilot driver on the skids. It's coming up. This is a wonderful, wonderful match. The hardcore title, a brilliant idea. I hope you guys stick with it. What a great way for, for Road Dog to reinvent himself after the breakup of, of the, uh, the New Age Outlaws as well. And what were you thinking when you're watching that? Well, I'm thinking that if I was a parent watching that, that is something that I would not want my child to see, but that would be my own decision to make. Just like um, if I was taking my child to the movie or letting them watch a television show on television, um, it would be my decision whether this was good for them to watch or not. And I, I think that it has to be the parent's responsibility to, uh, to know what their children are watching, to inform them. I think we've made tremendous progress just by admitting the fact that our show is entertainment, that it's not real. And I think that the parents need to reinforce that to their children. It's a real shame, it's a real shame that the WWE superstars who really go all out to entertain the fans out there cannot be nominated for a lot of awards like an Oscar. For I, an Oscar? It, it's very Absolutely. accepted that violence Absolutely. in movies movie stars are very accepted for being violence for being killers for of being course, but sexual but in our industry it's not accepted no. and we are in the entertainment business so we're why no is different. it accepted in i'd nominate one? you for something for no, that one hold on. no really hold on. We're, we're no different from the movies we're no different from any other yeah, but TV you're not shows. a movie though but you're uh, not a movie uh, uh, on national we're entertainment i would Absolutely. love to win what's the Oscar? difference What's the difference? Well, you know, there's a way that you could, you know, perhaps win an Oscar. Is you could you could be in a movie. Right now, you're not appearing in movies. You're do appearing it. in wrestling. Do but it. but that is my ultimate goal. Absolutely. And, 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 and best of luck to you when you're, you know, on the on the big screen and they're Sable and she could be nominated. But I but believe that this is a tremendous uh, platform for me now to to gain experience, being in front of a camera, learning to entertain people, learning to act. Just got a couple seconds, Jeff. I don't think it's a movie. It's more theater to me. And, this, and, and, and the ring is the stage, essentially. I don't think you go for an Oscar. You go for a Tony. This uh, is theater. Exactly. Uh, Tony, I, Oscar. Um, I don't you know, know about you guys. Why not it, give them the It's good award. stuff, but it's wrestling. <laughs> okay, let us know what you think of the show. And, of course, let us know who you want. All right, before we're done on this show, uh, Carl, you've got an announcement to make, right? Well, yeah. Uh, there's a group and organization called Brainchild that uh, knew we were going to be here on your show. And they brought this to me. And uh, this was a story that appeared in the uh, Toronto Sun. And there was a young gentleman who's only 13 years old, Michael Martin, who's watching the show. Uh, he was very ill, and his last wish was to see Stone Cold Steve Austin, which is what happened here. 
and I, I know he's watching, so we just want to say hello to him, and we hope he gets better. All right, and February the 8th, uh, big Sky live Dome, Raw, Sky Dome, the live on TSN. The biggest Raw in the history of the World Wrestling, World Wrestling Federation. No doubt about it. Sky and Dome. we'll have a special one-hour pre-event show. I was going to say game, but it's not a game. Uh, we're going to have The Rock one-on-one -on -one and another very special guest as well. Plus, there's uh, a promotion that will be run uh, here on TSN with the WWF where one person that wins will come down, watch the taping of our show, and then go to Raw. And they can watch Off the Record for that clue to have that chance to win come down here and be part of Off the Record on the taping. And, and also, you guys uh, have a Royal Rumble coming up? Yes, uh, in Anaheim, California on the 23rd? Yes, March, yes. Uh, no, sorry, from January 24th. 24th, I'm sorry. And that's yes. pay-per-view, uh, pay viewer's, viewer's choice, choice in Canada. Yes. What's up with you guys? Live Audio Wrestling, www.liveaudiowrestling.com. That's the URL to find the show. It's one hour of news, information, uh, behind-the-scenes stuff on all your favorite WDF and other wrestling superstars, interviews with the top stars, www.liveaudiowrestling.com, fan590.com. Oh you just go this on week, forever. The big Sable, Balboski. here's your belt back before we go. Oh, thank you. And <laughs> I would also hold like on, to interject www.sable.com. Uh, <laughs> and I would like to thank all my fans for uh, making my video, Sable Unleashed. Well, I got no website. I got nothing else the to say, but so long. The number one video in there. Michael Landsberg's clothing, courtesy Tom's Place in Kensington Market. I can take it. Uh, we saw 150,000 uh, videos in 